What about people who do not work on Saturdays for religious reasons? Totally fine. You can make that work. I know plenty of adjusters. Um, I, I often don't want to work on Sunday for, for this kind of the same reasons. Um, I don't quite adhere to it super strictly, but I know people that do, and they do just fine. Nobody's going to... As long as you're closing files, you don't have to call your manager and be like, hey, I have to take Saturdays off because, you know, it's, it's you know, my religion or whatever. Um, just, just close files. That's all they really care about. Um, do all I, I firms have help rooms that provide first that help to rookies? No, but they try to. Um, the major, the major firms like uh, Crawford, Alacrity, Pilot in particular, they all have. Um, they're all going to have help rooms. Now that said, the help rooms are often little cramped conference rooms in the extended stay in White Plains. And there's two people in there who are the quote unquote helpers. And then there's 35 uh, newbie adjusters in there, right? The later you go, you know, we're looking at this calendar here. The later you go, the, the more you get into the, like after the first week and into the second week, the more that room is going to fill up with people, right? So you want to, Get in there as early as possible that that first day when you inspections begin there on Thursday on the fourth you know that first green box <clears throat> you want to get in there right away and get help immediately you don't you're not going to need help the whole storm because once you see once you've done the the claims process enough times um, it it's clicks with you and you can you can do it on your own but they don't they don't all have it or they they try to have help help rooms or war rooms or whatever they call them. Um, and then something happens and the, they don't have them or they move them or whatever. It's right. So it can be a little bit challenging. That's why the program I put together is designed to sort of be like it, kind of like a help room for you, um, with that training. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at HagueEducation.com. So LV says, will FTD be live or self-paced? Uh, FTD is self-paced. Um, we did it live for a year and a half or almost two years um, just to kind of get it dialed in. Um, and we have each one of those modules and trainings distills down um, all that live training. We, we did it. We used to do it on um, you know, five days, eight hours a day um live so it was this, i was on zoom for eight hours for eight hours a day doing this and it got uh it was it was a long week but we, we managed to get this kind of dialed down and a lot of those early students um helped us to to add stuff and to take away stuff so this is super duper streamlined it's self-paced but you do have live calls every week you do have access to the, the student group um so there's there's a sort of a a group coaching component to it but it's also mainly self-paced. Ashley lives in Florida on the Gulf Coast. Coast, you think uh, may have enough work here at home instead of traveling far? Possibly. Florida is an extremely populous state. Um, get your Georgia license. I would get the, all the licenses from Texas. Still get those all as licenses from Texas to North Carolina. Those are day, day and a half drives. Um, you know, going west, maybe two day drive to Dallas or whatever. Um, but you can. That's that's it. if you only got those and you really only wanted to work there, you could probably get away with that, especially during hurricane season. Especially if you you built a a, a name for yourself, um, and you build a reputation as a good adjuster. You know you probably find that you're able to work closer to home. And if you you know you do a couple of cat deployments, um, then they probably would um, be depending on the firm, but they probably would be willing to put you on daily claims. There is only one company that provides E&O and general liability insurance solely to the insurance industry, and that's Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance that you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. From zero start, Chris says, do we really stand a chance to catch a storm deployment in 24? Yeah. Most, not most, but like you could say most um, adjusters 
got their start on a hurricane. The classic example is that the, um, you know, guy sitting there watching the news or he's standing out in the driveway and, and uh, watering the watering the driveway and his neighbor's like throwing a ladder on his truck and throwing bins in the back seat and everything. And he's, he's getting ready to take off. And he's like, Hey Bob, where are you going? Oh, I'm, I'm going to go down and work that hurricane, hurricane Katrina, hurricane Andrew, hurricane, whatever. Yeah, man. Hey, listen, you know, that we need people. So if uh, you want to, if you want to do it, you know, you can, you can make a hundred thousand dollars and then the guy goes right. And he sinks or swims. And most of those people will sink. Um, but you absolutely, can catch a storm deployment at 24, especially with the forecast. They just, uh, Colorado State University just updated their um, their outlook for the tropics, and it is uh, still even at the, even in August, they still have us with 20 more named storms, six major Cat five or Cat uh, three to five uh, major hurricanes making landfall in the U.S. Um, so it's still Season's just now getting started. I may have mentioned that previously, but Austin, with the Xactimate certification prep, um, is there additional cost to get the actual certification? And if so, how much is that typically? So yes, there is. So in order to take the test, you will buy that test from Xactware and they administer the test to you. And it is uh, 105 bucks, I think, right now. It's a good time to do it because they ha you have unlimited retries uh, for a year. So if you pay a hundred dollars and you take start taking those tests or take the whatever test you bought, um, if you don't pass the first time, then you can take it again. You can take it as many times until you pass uh, in a year. I'm licensed in my home state of Texas. Reggie says, how long do I have for this current season? When in 2024, when in 2024 is too late? And what other state licenses do I need? And I'm going to say, what Reggie's asking is, when should I quit my day job? Or what's the, when do I know that I shouldn't quit my day job? And that's a great question. And I will say this. Hurricane season, officially, according to Matt, starts today so the middle of august is when the the elbow and that curve of statistically when the, the most storms happen starts the 13th 14th 15th it starts in the middle of august and it ramps up and peaks in a big spike in right in the, like the 15th of september and then drops off um to basically the same volume or whatever is august in october and then tapers off in november and then it's pretty much done after that um so you've got two and a half months two and a half months left of storm of this hurricane season okay so there's a lot of time a lot of time and it really only takes one big storm right and they've got 20 storms that they say were there were 20 more storms that we're going to have we've already had we're on ernesto which is what the fifth storm it's a lot of storms okay um, making landfall and the the odds are higher by 10 to 15 percent of landfalling storms according to the stats that said <laughs> nothing could happen right i mean it's, it's it's just what it is and this is the heart of reggie's question what if nothing does happen right this is what i would say to do if you i wouldn't be quitting your day job if you're not worried about burning a bridge like right now um what you're going to burn a bridge if you if they if you if a hurricane is, is bearing down on the coast and you call your boss and you say hey listen uh you know i have to quit no not two weeks not two minutes it's like two seconds notice i gotta go right you know if you want to keep my last paycheck because i'm being a dick or you know whatever quitting like this so be it if you can do that then just wait until the storm happens. I don't like to burn bridges because it may be, like I said, you know, if this was in July or even June, I would say put in four weeks notice and save back as much money as you can, pick up, uh, you know, start work driving for Uber, delivering pizza or bartending or anything just to keep some money coming in. And then that way, you know, you, you're, you, you put in an, so not, you can do two weeks, but if you put in more than that, that's that actually will 
instead of lighting the bridge on fire, you're actually going to lay wreaths of flowers on the bridge and paint it pretty colors and everything so that in case it doesn't, in case it doesn't happen, this, the storm season, you can go back to your boss and say, Hey, listen, you know, that thing I was working on, it just didn't work out. I was wondering if, you know, if there was a role for me back in, if I get my old job back or whatever. Right. And since you helped him out and you've trained the, the person that took your job or that, you know, was that you, the hole that you left, maybe there's another spot in there. Your, your boss may say, yeah, you know what? We actually, I was thinking about promoting you before you quit, but, uh, you know, actually I could probably use you as an assistant to the regional manager and whatever it is. Right. Um, but right now you're, it's a little bit more of a desperation situation where you're just going to be, um, the storm's going to happen and you're going to have to quit. Right. If you get to, I would say this, um, if you're getting into, if we get into the the twenty like the twentieth of September and later, you know maybe even like the the very first of October and nothing's happened, um, I'm gonna probably fall back and say um, I'm gonna go back into kind of like let me just start stacking up more licenses and getting more trainings and you know seeing what I can do, keep networking, keep making phone calls, go to NACA, no matter what, if you work or not. Go to NACA 100% if you want to do this. Um, network, 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 because there are opportunity, opportunities in the winter time. The the best, um, most, let's see, I would say the most statistically advantageous time to uh, get work as a new adjuster is right now, right? So this is the time when it's, it's if it's going to pop off and it's going to happen for you guys, this is, this is it, right? I can't make any promises. I don't know. I can't predict the weather. You know, they can say it's 25 storms, and I mean, I don't know what they said last year. It was more than one, the one that we got last year. Um, but, it, you know, adjusters were still working last year. New adjusters were still working last year. Um, and like when I showed you guys those stats, you know, even our even our grads were working last year. It's still possible, right? It's just going to be, you got to be a little bit, we got to be willing to be adaptable, and you got to be willing to kind of like, you know, sort of like go with the flow and roll with the punches, right? You kind of want to be Neo a little bit. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Xactware Training, the creators of Xactimate X1 and Xactimate Mobile. Xactimate is the most advanced and widely used estimating platform in the insurance and restoration industries. Get certified right now as an Xactimate expert at the link in the description below. In the meantime, check out this video right here on Adjuster TV. Or is it here? I think it's here. Pretty sure it's here. Could be here. It's one of those places.